Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back, uh, John and Steve. How are you? Good. Uh, good. So, uh, you, good. Steve. I'm sorry. No, good. Thank Andrew. you for having me. This is so much fun. Uh, the pleasure is all ours. I, I, uh, last time we, we met, uh, you were talking about feelings. And is it, do I have this correct? This is the, the last uh, of four foundational yes. messages mm -hmm. so that we can understand how our brain works and then apply it. Yes. And really the kinds yeah. of the difference between what we're doing in these four videos and the application of them to individual issues, what would that feel like after we get the foundation? After we listen to today's presentation, we're going to realize that our feelings do not have to victimize us. We do not have to be victims of our feelings. And many of us feel that way. And I'm going to show you where our feelings are coming from and what we can do with them. And I think this is one of the most exciting discoveries of cognitive psychology. And it came again from Dr. Albert Ellis. So hang on to your seats. Today we're going to Good. talk about feelings. Good. I'm ready for this. Okay. Looking forward to it. The reason why I want to get into feelings is because of what the world, and especially America, is going through. The new normal isn't coming, it's here. And not only is it worldwide, but it is right next door. And yet what we've learned together is that the preparation for COVID and relationships and everything else begins up here. Everything starts with how we think and the decisions that we make. So, let me summarize some of the principles that we learned together because I'm a teacher. I like to summarize everything. Principle number one, your brain believes what you tell it without question. Okay. Here's principle two. This is new. Hang on to your seat. Ready? Our feelings come primarily from our beliefs. What do you mean, Steve? Just that. Let me illustrate. Let's imagine that Art and I have been friends for years. Hi, Art. And I show up at Art's house with a big, huge shovel. I say, hi, Art. Hi, Steve. How are you? How are your kids? Great. I'm going to dig a hole in your backyard. And Art says, well, that's weird, but okay. So I go to Art's backyard. I start digging a hole. And as he watches the hole, he begins developing some beliefs. Let's see. Steve and I have been friends for years. Our children have played together. Steve knows it's my birthday today. He also knows I love rose bushes. <gasps> That's what he's doing. He's, he's digging a hole to plant a rose bush in my backyard for my birthday. Steve, I love you. Get married over here. We'll have a nice birthday party. That's scenario number one. Scenario number two is that Art and I absolutely hate each other. Hate each other. Have for years. And finally, I show up at his front door with a shovel on a Saturday morning. I say, hi, Art. Hi, Steve. I'm digging a hole in your backyard. So I go to his backyard, start digging the hole. And this time, Art's beliefs are completely different. His beliefs are that I'm digging the hole to bury him in it. Okay. Now watch this. Same art. Same Steve. Same shovel. Same Saturday morning. Same backyard. Same hole. Completely different beliefs. Completely different feelings. You have met people 
who have been raised in situations that were horrendous. And yet you look at their lives and you are just absolutely amazed. You've also met people who have been raised in situations to die for. And some of them wish they could. What's the difference? Here's what I want to share with you today. It's not the situation. It's what you believe about the situation that's bringing in the feelings. In other words, we can't say, I will feel this way, I will feel that way. But we know where they're coming from. And we can replace, not change, replace those beliefs. So let me give you some examples. Here's some things that I hear from people, okay? Especially right now. Some people have said to me, I feel absolutely useless because I'm not working. And I'm stuck at home. Or I feel really boring because I'm just getting older. And I feel that way every day. Or I feel stranded in this darn pandemic. You see, we think that events such as being unemployed or being older or being in the pandemic explains how we feel. Rather, it's our belief about being unemployed. It's our belief about being older. It's our belief about being in the pandemic that explains how we feel. Why is that so exciting? Because you can replace those beliefs. Is it easy? Of course not. Of course not. Because, dear ones, some of the beliefs you've had, you've had about yourself your entire life. But they are never too old to be replaced. And they can be. So let me give you some examples of how you can do this. Let's go to the first one. We think that um, of that we 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 think that um, here. Excuse me. Okay. We feel I feel useless because I'm unemployed. One of the things I don't miss anymore is commutes. I used to travel down to San Jose. That's two hours one way to speak. That's a five-day drive if the, if the uh, traffic is bad. I don't have to do that anymore, okay? I'm with my wife 24-7. Most of the time, that's great, as she would say. <laughs> Not always, but it's great. I can travel more with my mask. I'm fine-tuning my skins here. I picked up the guitar again. I'm beginning to play that. I'm loving it. There's classes we can always register for on the Internet. Just like this one, we have the time now to get back in shape or we can start our own business. There's just all sorts of wonderful things we could do because I'm unemployed. Okay. How about being older? Well, here's what I've discovered. When I say I forgot, you believe me now. I'm 73. That's just daddy. Okay. Wednesday morning gets me a 10% discount at Oliver's. Okay. I'm usually offered a seat in the crowded room that's really a trip no one's hurt if i leave a boring party and i can say no without hurting anybody so there's some real advantages to being older okay what i hear from me and from mary and from our daughters and from people around me is that i feel stranded in the pandemic here's some things that are coming out Countries that are enemies are helping each other. Countries that are enemies are helping each other. Carbon emissions are absolutely plunging. There's a focus on essential workers, people who bag your food, people who take care of you. We're seeing how very important they are, okay? People are sleeping better, it turns out. People are in touch with their families. There are clearer waterways now because people just aren't doing the things they used to do. 
And mainly, there's just a break in our routine. We're doing new things. Before this, eight months ago, I didn't know Zoom at all. Now I'm an expert. Why? Because I've had to replace my thinking. Notice they didn't say change. I always use the word replace. So, third principle. Number one, our brain believes what we tell it. Number two, our feelings are coming primarily from our beliefs. Principle number three, and this will bring everything together. Our brains are continually rewiring itself. So let me give you an example. 2018 was a really interesting year for me. At the beginning of the year, I discovered I had cancer. And then not only that, I discovered I had diabetes. And then I discovered I had cataracts. And then the end of 2018, I discovered I had advanced heart disease. My mitral valve was just flipping all over the place. Well, for the cancer, they took a graft from my skin and now I'm cancer free. For the diabetes, I've had to completely change my diet and I've lost another 30 pounds. For the cataracts, they replaced the cataracts and I've got my glasses here, where are they? Here they are, but I don't have to wear them anymore because they put in corrected blends. I love that, okay? For the heart disease, I had open heart surgery last year and now my heart is good as new. But here's the point I want to leave with your people. My feelings did not come from the cancer or the cataracts. They came from what I was saying about the cancer and the cataracts. And my brain said, okay. Let me share with you one last application. I think I may have shared this with you before, but I'd love to share it anyway. In 2008, I was laid off. 62 years old, the beginning of the Great Recession. I was devastated. I said, that's the end of my working. Came home, told Mary, and she said to me, no, Steve, something wonderful is going to happen. You know what happened? I have spoken to over 40,000 people. I've literally traveled the gold speaking. Just got back from India a few months ago. I've written four books, and I love what I'm doing. Where did it start? It started with a mindset that Mary gave me. Something wonderful is going to happen. And that's when I look for it. That's how the brain works. Let me give you a final story and then we'll close. We have two daughters, Abby and Sarah. When Sarah got to be college age, she said, I want to go to the University of San Francisco, which is very exciting because it's very close from where we live, but it's also very, 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 very expensive. And if you're a teacher, you don't teach for the money. So we did not have the money for her to go to USF. But we met on a Sunday night, our whole family, and we created an affirmation for Sarah and for us. And we prayed. And we said, Sarah is not only going to go to USF, she's going to go debt free. Why do we do that? Because when we do that, our brain looks for ways to make that true. That's how the brain works. This is really interesting. That was on a Sunday night. I went to work on Monday morning, taking the same route I had taken for seven years from Roner Park to Santa Rosa, about seven miles. This time I noticed a sign on the side of a freeway. It said University of San Francisco. Right in my own backyard. I had been driving that freeway for seven years. I had never seen the sign. Why did I see it this way? Because my brain was looking for it. My brain does that. 
the original title of my book was Making Your Mind Your Mentor. My publisher said nobody knows what a mentor is, so they changed it to Making Your Mind Magnificent. I like my title better. A mentor is someone who sees more in you than you see in yourself. That's what my brain did. To make a very, very long story short, I did my teaching, went over to USF, introduced myself, got an interview, came in for that week. I had already written two books, brought the books with myself. I so brought the books with me. See, I'm a published author on computer software, etc. They said, I'm sorry, you can't work here because you have to have a master's or you have to have a doctorate. I said, well, thank you very much. And that was it. They called me four months later. And they said, hi, Steve. This is USF. A class just came up on computer software. You're the first person we thought of. And I said, yes, but I don't have a master's. I don't have a doctorate. Yes, Steve, but you're a published author. Here's what we'll do. We'll grandfather you in. And if you agree to get your master's here at USF while you're teaching, we will credit you all the units that you're teaching towards your, towards your master. I then said, could we do the same thing for my daughter? And they said, absolutely. So for the next 10 years, I taught at USF in Santa Rosa, Sacramento, San Ramon, Oakland, San Francisco. And they credited all that money and they paid me an incredible amount to teach. And it paid for my master's and my daughter's education. I figured out one time I went to Excel and I said, how much money have I made over the last 10 years? From two books that never sold, but the tuition that they paid me, um, the tuition that, that they credited me and what they paid me, over 10 years, I had made $145,000 simply by saying, I'm locking on to what I want. That's how the brain works. So let's bring this all together. We learn together, number one, that your brain believes what you tell it without question. We learn, number two, that you are made up of thousands and thousands of self-images. Those self-images are learned. They're based on what you say to yourself about yourself. We learn that we can replace some of the negative stuff with positive stuff. And your brain says, okay, when you lock onto war, the new message you are giving you, your brain rewires itself. So those new messages become your self images. And those self images become a part of who you are. Finally, we talked about feelings. And the fact that our feelings are coming from how we were raised, what we look like, what we've done. Our feelings come from what we say about how we were raised and what we look like and what we've done. And if we want to replace what we're saying, we can. And when we do, what does the brain say? Okay. Is it true? Don't care. All I care about is what you tell me. I cannot tell you how many people's lives I have seen change just by that very, very simple information. So let me leave you with this. Your brain's believing everything you tell it about yourself. Now that you know that, you can catch the negative stuff. And you can say, you know what? That's not me anymore. And your brain says, okay. Doesn't act if it's true. And you keep saying that, the brain starts rewiring to what you are saying becomes a part of who you are. Wow. That's 
amazing. It is amazing. Wow. It is amazing. Yeah. By the way, um, uh, uh, Steve, uh, now that people have watched uh, uh, these four uh, segments, uh, there are going to be some that will want to get the book and uh, maybe some other, uh, uh, I think you offer a course. Uh, how mm -hmm. can they find out about that? They, the book is always on Amazon. It's called Making Your Mind Magnificent. It's both hardcover and Kindle. And the course that I gave in Silicon Valley is now online. And you can find it by typing in Stephen R. Campbell dot teachable dot com. I am offering a $248 discount. And if you want that discount, email me at Stephen C at sbcglobal.net and the price of the online seminar goes from 297 to 49 and I'm giving that as a gift because we're all struggling and we all need help well, thank well this you, series thank this, you. this series of four videos found your foundational videos are a big help uh, it's a wonderful uh, Serious. So I'm very happy that we could get you to do it for Celebrating Act Two. Oh, so thank we you. thank you. Thank you. Thank but you. equally as important is with this foundation of four foundational videos, with this, we now can move forward and start changing our lives yes. in the specific ways we might want to. Yes. Uh, we talked about quitting smoking, losing weight, things like that. So. I don't know what subject we're going to choose for next time, but the next time we see your video, it'll be a very specific, what, how it'll to probably maybe? probably be on losing weight because that's what everyone is struggling with, especially right now with COVID. Yeah. So yeah. we'll talk about that. Well, I'm going to hurry out and have one of my favorite meals before we, <laughs> before I, we do that and I have to uh, give myself a new affirmation. And yeah. you, you know what the key to losing weight is not is not taking away those favorite meals. Just eat less of it. Yeah. Yeah. Just eat less of it. Okay. Don't take away your favorite stuff. Just eat more slowly and less of it. But we'll talk all about that. Okay. Good. Looking yeah. forward to that. Steve, Thanks. this has been wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, John. I love you guys. This has been wonderful too. We love you too. I'm so glad that I'm going to be back because I'm enjoying this. Good. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.